Well, it's that time of year again, a time full of traditions. The trees are up, the stockings are out, and a brand new John Mayer, Hadinki and G-Shock collab is in town. Hey guys, welcome back to Time Drops and welcome to another video. The trio are back for the third time in a row this Christmas with the launch of another DW6900, staying true yet again to the trilogy's inspiration of the classic 1980s Casio keyboards. We're going to be running through everything this brand new model has to offer, so if that sounds good to you and you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and join our awesome community of watch lovers, then sit back, relax and we'll jump right in. So first things first, let's take a little trip down memory lane. In December of 2020, G-Shock, leading wristwatch media company Hadinki and rockstar John Mayer first teamed up to create the original grey version of this timepiece, the DW6900JM20-8, taking inspiration from the Casio Tone SK5 keyboard, an instrument John Mayer grew up playing in the 1980s. The DW6900 was also celebrating its 25th anniversary in 2020, so this collaboration came at a great time for everyone involved. This watch generated a lot of hype, subsequently meaning it sold out within just a few minutes. And as you likely already know, these were soon on the secondary market as flippers took the opportunity to make a quick few buckaroos. Opinions on that aside, thanks to their high level of popularity, we then saw a return the following year in 2021. The second collaboration taking design inspiration from another one of Mayer's favourites, the PT-80, to create the DW6900JM21-7 a very clean model boasting an off-white base and popping multicolour accents. And fast forwarding to right now, released at the drop of a hat on December 13th, 2022, we're seeing what might be the most striking of the three in this all new baby blue G-Shock DW6900JM22-2, with reference to the Casio PT-1. Now this one launched at the same retail price as the last two at $180 and was available directly from either Casio or Hodinkee.com. I managed to pick mine up from the latter at the first time of asking luckily and delivery to the UK took exactly one week, which I was pretty impressed with to be fair. Now, as I'm in the UK, this meant a $50 shipping fee plus another £40 of import fees. So with all things considered, this ended up costing me about £240, which currently translates to around $290 US dollars. So while this won't be the same for everyone, I think it's important to paint the full picture. But I'm a sucker for some baby blue, especially when it's sat on a DW6900. And this is for true fans what we consider a collector's item. So I was willing to pay the extra. Taking a closer look, the DW6900JM22-2 features what's officially known as a matte dusty blue resin case and strap, which G-Shock State is a more playful colour combination that's an excellent companion to the first two collaborations, which I have to agree with. This colour is stunning, subtle yet striking at the same time. I think it comes into its own in natural light and is one I think will look especially nice in the summer. And that's also thanks to the peach, coral and turquoise from the PT1 keyboard being brought in to highlight the triple graph display, sitting very much at home on its soft cream dial. Now, in terms of what you're looking at here, the bottom or main screen displays the time, day and date, as well as the functions as you navigate through using the buttons on the outer of the casing while the triple graph, as I just mentioned, sits above, otherwise known as its three eyes. These are each split into five segments. The two eyes on the left represent seconds, and a segment fills up or disappears every second. It runs in turn from left to right, then the larger eye on the right-hand side has segments that represent 10 seconds. Still following? Good. Which will fill up all the way to one minute. This isn't necessarily a must-have function. In fact, it doesn't really do anything, but it certainly looks cool. The dark grey colour is also pulled from the sharp and flat keys of the PT1 keyboard and added to the illuminator button with a Coral G to finish. All four indicators for the buttons, while looking black, all in fact share the navy colour from the writing on the PT1 as well, a perfect accent to contrast the lighter blue background. All of these sections are enhanced in legibility, not only thanks to the timepiece boasting a very easy to read positive display, but also the DW6900's incredible electroluminescent backlight. When pressing the large Coral G, you'll ignite the light to reveal this wonderful and unmistakably Casio bluey green coloured light, which is more than powerful enough to make this legible in darker lighting conditions. As you flip this watch around some more, you'll notice that we're getting a stainless steel case back, which features a very nice vertically brushed finish and is signed by each of the parties involved. And in terms of dimensions, this case has a length of 53.2mm, it's 50mm in width and 18.7mm thick, weighing approximately 67 grams. 
Now, I've always loved the DW6900s and worn them for years, so the dimensions, while obviously being significant in size, are ones that I'm used to. I would say though that these do suit most wrist sizes. It's a G-Shock after all, so if you're thinking it's looking oversized, just know that's how G-Shocks are supposed to look. It's their DNA, so just go with it. I think you'll be surprised by the comfort as well. In terms of functionality, you'll receive G-Shock's infamous shock resistance, 200 meter water resistance, a stopwatch, a countdown timer, multi-functioning alarm, and that glorious electroluminescent backlight. We know what we're getting with the DW6900 by now. I mean, it's been around for over 25 years. This watch is incredibly durable and packed with everything a fun yet functional timepiece could need. I think Casio and Hodinkee themselves capped this watch off rather well when they said the DW6900JM22-2 gives you both the toughness you'd expect from a G-Shock with a colorway that will make your inner creative child smile. When it's all said and done, this G-Shock stays true to the trilogy's inspiration of classic 1980s Casio keyboards. And these keyboards served as an entry point into the world of music, as G-Shocks often serve as an entry into the world of watches. Whew, they've done well there, haven't they? Hats off to you, marketing team. But that's exactly what these watches are. They're just good fun. Yes, the limited nature of this watch means it's priced significantly higher than your everyday DW6900. So if you like the watch's style in particular, but not fussed about the collaboration, there's plenty of great options to go for at lower price points. But what you are getting is a limited and very cool collectible collaboration from three big names in the watch world. I was wondering whether this would be a yearly thing moving forward when this one was announced, but the trio have officially confirmed this as the finale in the launch material, so it's over and out from them. But I'm not mad at that. I love all three of these designs, but I think it's fair to say that this is my favourite of the lot. And with all that being said, that just about wraps this one up guys. What do you think about this release, or the collaboration in general? Did you manage to get your hands on one? Do you even want one? Let me know in the comments section below. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe for loads more reviews and unboxings of some of your favorite watch releases. Thanks so much for watching again, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.